transmitiendo desde Cuba, territorio libre en América. Radio Habana Cuba comienza su programación en idioma inglés por onda corta, frecuencia modulada e internet. This is Radio Havana Cuba. Broadcasting from Cuba, free territory of the Americas. We're broadcasting in English on shortwave and real audio online at www.radiohc.cu. Hi, and welcome again to Radio Vancouver's English language broadcast for this Monday, April the 11th. I'm Gerwin Jones, sitting in for a vacationing Ed Newman. And with me here in Studio 6, we have Lena Valverde and Maria Luisa Erke on the news desk. Stay with us over the next hour or so for news about Cuba around the world and our every other Monday feature, the scientific and medical report. Richard Clue, who is one of the defense team working on the appeals for the five. It was done by telephone from Radio Havana, Cuba, to his office in Miami. In the interview, he gives us an update on René's legal situation under probation. <laughs> to natural things dresses up the green leaves of desire. Memories of the forest and rain spring up with their clandestine breath. And I feel once again in my throat an ardor of jasmine and blood. Irrepressible, my heart evokes glances faithful to pure love, kisses to the embrace of life, caressing that the peace to my soul. Today we have started our show with a tribute to Bernie Dwyer, who worked in Radio Vancouver for many, many years in the admiration and love of the fellow broadcast
tout de suite. In Argentina, with participants demanding the lifting of Washington's economic, commercial, and financial blockade against the Caribbean state. The event, organized by the solidarity groups in Cuba, France, Southwest Latin America, was attended by Hero of the Republic of Cuba, Ramon Lavagnino, one of the five Cubans who served alone on fair prison terms in U.S. Yales for fighting terrorism. The meeting's final declaration demands an end to all U.S. terrorists and subversive actions against Cuba, as well as Washington's attempts to interfere in Cuba's international in internal affairs. The Solidarity activists also demanded the return of the portion of Cuban territory in Guantanamo illegally occupied by the U.S. naval base and due compensation for the economic damage that the blockade policy had inflicted on the Cuban economy. Cuban intellectual Abel Prieto has warned of what he called a right-wing offensive in Latin America intent on undermining the regional progressive processes that have changed the face of our continent. Prieto's comments came over the weekend in Caracas, Venezuela, where he is attending the 12th International Conference of the Network of Intellectuals and Artists in Defense of Humanity. The event, which runs through April 14th, focuses on today's challenges for Latin Latin America and the role regional artists and intellectuals are called to play in defense of our people's struggles for independence and sovereignty. For more than three years of negotiations with the Colombian government, FARC rebels are hopeful that a final bilateral ceasefire deal with peace sealed in the coming days. After making crucial progress in the peace talks in Havana, Cuba, leaders announced Sunday. We have had important advances, said FARC commander Carlos Antonio Lozada in a press conference on Sunday. We are working with respect to the ceasefire and specifically on the characteristics of the encampment areas. The questions of the terms of the bilateral ceasefire has been a key issue on the agenda in the final stages of the negotiations and a key piece of the puzzle to put in place in order to make way for a definitive end to 50 years of internal armed conflict. Lozada also stressed that the issue of the FARC disarmament, another outstanding item on the peace agenda, will require commitments from both sides at the negotiation table. The Syrian Prime Minister says government forces are preparing an operation to retake control of the northwestern city of Aleppo. Following a meeting with Russian lawmakers in the Syrian capital, Damascus, Prime Minister Wal al Haki announced that Syria, with its Russian partners, will launch an operation to block all illegal armed groups that have not joined or have taken the ceasefire. The Premier noted that capturing Aleppo would allow the government forces to advance towards their Esser, which is held by Takfir militants, including Daesh. Also on Sunday, army soldiers took control of Bornes and Saitan villages, which lie south of Aleppo. Backed by the Russian air cover, the Syrian army has vowed to press ahead with its counter-term military operations and drive Daesh elements out of their major strongholds in the country. In yet another major blow to Daesh Takfiris, Syrian army units regained control of the historic city of Palmyra in Homs province late last month following weeks of heavy catches with the medicine. If you're listening to Radio Vancouver's English language broadcast on shortwave, we wish you the best possible reception. But don't forget that we're also streaming live audio on our website, www.radiohc.cu. For listeners in the Havana area, there is a third option, and we can be heard on cellulose radios, TV audio at 102.5 FM. Now back to our news. 
The second international friendship meeting held session over the weekend in the Cuban capital with the participation of Cuban university students and over 100 young people from Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean who are studying on Cuban scholarships. Participants dedicated the meeting to the 90th birthday of the Cuban revolution leader, Fidel Castro. Addressing delegates Ismael Omauro Isaka, a leader of the Federation of University Students, described Fidel as the main promoter of Cuba's internationalism and the country's cooperation programs with other peoples in need to the world over. Participants also expressed their solidarity with the peoples of Brazil and Venezuela against ongoing destabilization plots to overthrow democratically elected governments. The sail training vessel ARM Cautemoc of the Mexican Navy arrived at the port of Havana Monday morning. During their stay in the Cuban capital, the Mexican Marines will fulfill a packed agenda that includes a courtesy visit to the headquarters of Cuba's Revolutionary Navy, as well as a tour of places of historical and cultural interest. The Cautemoc is a sailing ambassador for Mexico and a frequent visitor to world ports having sailed over 400,000 nautical miles, some 700 miles kilometers, in her 23 years of service. It has also participated in boat races such as the Columbus Boat Race, Cody Sark Boat Race, and the Osaka Boat Race. and brokers fire for Yemen came into effect in the run-up to peace talks in Kuwait. The ceasefire began at midnight. Sunday and initially went into effect 